Good evening, guys. Wednesday, Fed Day. If OMC statement came out during the day, uh, roughly, I think roughly three hours ago, and that did move the market, as we talked about yesterday, big time, big, 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 big time. Again, I haven't read any of the statements or anything, uh, but according to what the what the price action was, at least for today, uh, somehow more dovish than than people might have have thought. Uh, but yeah, again, everything reacted to the upside, um, more or less. But again, I will <clears throat> I will say this though that. Um, that on these days, you know, the, the day after is is probably the most important because, uh, again, you you can we can give it all away the the day after. So I, I want to see tomorrow where we close, and then I'm I will say that we are out of the you know, of this you know the days where we can have a, can have a lot of noise. Obviously today and then 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 tomorrow as well, but definitely. A, Closing at the highs, more or less across the board. So again, follow me here, guys, on Twitter, on YouTube, and also on Substack. I'm doing a lot more on Substack. I'm, I'm really fond of it now. I think it's a great tool. And I will post a lot of free stuff there. Uh, and also, uh, at some point in time, not now, all the paid content will be there on Substack. So, so check it out. Let's see. First off, we need to... We need, yeah, we need to do the daily scoreboard. <laughs> it's just we need to. I know that silver has roughly 40 minutes until we close, but I want to show you something here again tomorrow. I'm, I'm, I'm always a bit scared the day after the FOMC statement, especially in when we had such a huge move in one direction. Uh, I'm a little bit hesitant. However, I want to show you silver now. Look at it right there, guys. This is the best outlook that we have had for silver in a very, 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 very long time. It is truly amazing here. Um, we have co come up a long way. So maybe we have, you know, a bounce. But I do think this is the beginning of something absolutely astonishing here for silver. Um, you can see here, we have four years worth of sideways action, more or less, which, I mean, you can delete this one here. And then you can see we take the top there from 2011, the high there. And then we had the silver squeeze, tag, tag, tag. So again, here we are, and again, really trying to break out. The last few times we had a tiny wick, then we actually had a closing week above, came back down heavily. This seems it's this seems like the real deal. It really does. Um, again, we need to get above and confirm above 26. Right now we are at 25.5. So and as I have been saying, uh, or at least I, I tweeted it on, on, on Twitter, obviously <laughs> tweeted on Twitter, <laughs> but anything between 25 and 26, at that point in time, silver can can be completely unstable to the upside. Um, it is, you know, in that zone where all of a sudden the shorts have to cover, cover and, you know, the writing on the wall at that point in time. Silver up 2.5% for now. It was basically flat going into FOMC. So yeah, you can see that big bounce there. Gold as well, beautiful. 0.3% major move. We had this triangle there that we looked at. Massive, massive move to the upside. The move looks like to be the real deal. It does. It really does. You can see here we tested that mega spike in December. You know, my, one of the best setups that, that there is in my view. You break out of a very big, important level. You're coming down for the retest, but you do it in a very controlled manner. This is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Boom. So for now, there is no excuse or there's no reasoning to be bearish on gold now. It is just fantastic, fantastic across the board. What is also very intriguing is the gold to silver ratio. You can see here it is potentially starting to fail guys to get back into the wedge and then we go potentially obviously no confirmation here but it looks like it really wants to dive um that would be one of the best things that has happened for for this ratio in in a very 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 long time uh, again no confirmations yet i think we need we need to get into the early april 
then I think we can confirm it, but definitely it looks like it wants to to do a major drop in that ratio. Lovely. Dixie down 0.4%. And, um, and yeah, a nasty candle here. Um, nothing major technical, you know, taken out. You can see here we actually had some support now. So again, tomorrow, I really want to see tomorrow how that looks. Um, there is a lot of things going on here. Um, so I'll not go into detail on that one here. The good old Bitcoin getting a big bounce today. Um, basically, we had this, I looked at this tiny squeeze here. And usually it gives a move to the upside. So how high can it go? It's up 8% today. So that is that is quite massive. What if we take roughly, you can see here we're actually breaking this channel. So again, Bitcoin here is having a bit of a, uh, a bit of a bounce here. It's still not out of the woods by any means because now you know the previous highs are resistance and so on. But but definitely a good bounce level Bitcoin. It's it's not the worst. Um, oil here down one percent for for the day. Again, it's it's pounded on that eighty two dollar level, and um, and yeah, the eighty two is the one to breach, uh, no doubt about it. But as long as we are above down here, that that uh, horizontal, excuse me, almost a horizontal neckline, we are good to go uh, to the upside. So we cannot go below roughly seventy eight point five. And when we get above, when if we get above eighty two point something, then we are potentially on the route for that for this invert head and shoulders target, which is up there. So oil still looking good, still looking fantastic. GDX, ooh, oh, GDX, the gold miners, boom. Amazing candle today, 4%. I mean, overall, you know, the squeeze, the, there it is. This could also, again, together with the gold, looks fantastic. The GDX is really trying to, to make a statement here. So same thing. We have this golden rail here up 4.3% up today. If we break here, we are on the route to visit this massive resistance zone here. Uh, we are at 26 and we can easily go to 50, you know, within a very, very, very short time span because when it moves, <laughs> it moves, right? So it, it this can literally take, you know, a, a few months, then then we are have double in, in the silk. This is a bit delayed, the uranium spot price. I know we are at 90, excuse me, 89, I think it was, or 88. So we are up uh, like 4% today, which is nice to see. I also will do the uranium flash recap today because I think we broke some short-term, very important resistances today on URNM. Um, so check that out when I, um, when, I, when I post it on YouTube. That's on YouTube, the free stuff. Um, URNM, again, up for almost 5% today. Uh, I will go into the details, but definitely this was a a good win. It, it was a good win here today for the short-term bulls. No doubt about it. Yes, you heard me saying it. It was actually quite good. Um, the 10-year rates, again, didn't do a whole lot. It's basically flat with a lot of volatility. As you can see here, if we zoom in, a lot of volatility. You know, wicks on both sides there. Um, so I don't know. Again, I'm really curious to see what the next day brings here after the Fed, after this whole, you know, all the noise is gone and uh, and things calm down again. A palladium, excuse me, platinum, came here, retested the next one here, went a bit deep, but we're back above again. Very bullish. Very, very bullish. Palladium, up 3%, beautiful stuff. Again, this is your... What is that? That's roughly two months, you know, of uh, inverted head and shoulders, massive breakout, massive retest, good green candle, decent volume. It it looks better and better for uh, the good old palladium. Platinum, one and a half percent. From a technical point of view, I think we tagged, yeah, we actually broke out from that triangle there and then we retested it here. Also good volume, good candle for now. Overall, you know, my take on this lovely metal here. Uh, this is, you know, a long-term inverted head and shoulders that are being made here. And uh, this could definitely fly in Q3, maybe Q4, depending on how fast it gets to, you know, about a thousand. But basically flat also today is copper, but copper looks incredibly good here again. We are looking at different copper miners and uh, that breakout there seems to be valid. Until we get back, if we get back below four, then that's invalidated. But for now, it, it, it's incredibly bullish. 
third weekly coming here. I mean, that's just fantastic for copper. All righty, let's see here. Uh, again, just a quick recap, uh, Dixie down, everything else up, more or less. Not so much oil, but again, other than that, everything just went in one direction after the Fed. So um, let's see here, the economical calendar. Good. Tomorrow, what data could we, you know, potentially be moving the markets? There is a few. Nothing, you know, in the in the same scale as today with a with a a Fed, you know, FOMC um, statement. So, but again, we do have one. I, I will come into that here. We have Britain with some CPI numbers. Hey, no, excuse me, that's uh, that was today. Tomorrow, I was like, and that was today. Uh, we don't have much actually, but, but we do have. I want to show you down to the U.S. Open here. We do have the continuing jobless claims and initial jobless claims always, more or less always a something that gets the market moving in, in one uh, direction or the other. Um, so again, that will bring in some volatility one hour before the open tomorrow in, in, in the US. And then we have the uh, a small one there, where is, I think it was the SP500. Yeah, here we have the SP500, the PMIs, which also can, you know, slightly move the markets um, in either way. But again, compared to, to, to the data that we got today, this is just basically more or less nothing. Uh, yeah, good. Let's see here. We have the Twitter stuff coming in. I can't remember how much I actually found for today, but I did find a few. Um, I think uh, these we took yesterday haven't been able to clean up. So I only have two, actually. Uh, I, I need to, I'm slacking on the Twitter stuff. I'm so terribly sorry for that. But uh, yeah, I will get, I'll get onto that again. The case for silver here with EFR, this is energy, energy fuels, a uranium stock, UUU, making a bottom looks good to me. Um, also, I, I, I agree, it does here. Still very early breakout, a lot of downward momentum. However, we are breaking a lot of um, of resistance. Also, we have this high here. First leg down, second impulse, third impulse. This looks like a genuine bottom to me. We are also into this cluster over here. So again, there's a lot of good things here for energy fuels. Again, if you believe that the uranium bull market is, you know, is still alive, which I think it is for, from a long-term perspective, Looking at a few years out, the uranium bull market is very much alive. You know, these here, I mean, this is not the worst place to buy if you want to to buy what I see as actually kind of cheap uranium stock. And uh, the only thing is that it has underperformed a bit here lately. You know, this move down here uh, has been quite sharp for some reason. Again, I only follow the technicals, but but again, overall, I think energy fuels, I'm, I have a good, good portion in energy fuels. So... Uh, so yeah, I truly believe in that stock also. Here we have, we have Maneco64. He also has a, has a very large YouTube channel where he ha, he puts up one video daily um, where um, where he talks about different things, uh, not only gold and silver, but a lot of a lot of financial stuff. Really clever guy. He knows a lot. Uh, definitely follow him. A lot of value. Brazilians generally rely on the dollar as a safe haven. This time around, I think it would be a huge mistake. So gold in the Brazil, uh, the Brazilian currency, I don't know the exact, um, but anyways, you can see here, this is just a massive move. This is a three year breakout, four year breakout for gold. Um, yeah, gold is just truly amazing. Um, so yeah, that's it. <clears throat> Crazy day, actually. I will do a video. I will do the URM update. Then I will do a very long video on Gold Ventures, Silver Sitfolio, where I have marked maybe 20 silver stocks that looks, that has a good setup, and I want to show you it. Uh, to, again, the paid members on Substack, they will get to see it. And then, um, yeah. Thank you, guys. Again, do you think silver is breaking out here? Let me know in the comments below. Is this the, the real deal for silver? I mean, it looks incredibly good here again um yeah i'll not take much more of your time let me know guys in the comment below silver yes or no let me know have a great day guys as always stay safe